the pace, a climb in U.S. sales has its profit ahead of expectations. And India's inflation battle and the interest rate dilemma. Deputy RBI Governor Subir Gokarn is one of the big guests talking to us on First Up this morning. And thank goodness it's Friday. Welcome to this edition of First Up, coming to you live from our central Hong Kong studios. I'm Susan Lee. Let's get straight to the close on Wall Street. Third day of declines for U.S. stocks. So we have the S&P 500 leading the way lower, being dragged down by energy shares after beginning the week with multi-year highs. So let's see how these losses are filtering through here to the Asia-Pacific as they close off this trading week. Australia getting through the alphabet. So we're seeing declines already in the first few minutes, uh, down by a quarter of 1%. But take a look at the Australian dollar up a little bit this morning, but trading below 104 levels versus the uh, U.S. dollar. And here's a look at New Zealand as well. The top 50 benchmark at the gates, the first one across uh, this region. And we're seeing losses here of a fifth of 1%. The Kiwi dollar finding a little bit of strength this morning after the losses we saw yesterday with the GDP missing. And uh, the page to Japan as well. Here's a preview of the uh, Tokyo market open. These Nikkei futures at last close in Chicago on the Merck uh, pressing in a small decline. Maybe we're down 60 points when markets kick off. But the uh, story is in the Japanese currency, the yen, which actually strengthened by one full percent yesterday and uh, seeing a little bit of weakness uh, this morning. So uh, 82.62 versus the U.S. dollar. But the story on the markets is about a global slowdown. So from China to Europe, we're seeing manufacturing contract and that ripple effect from stocks to commodities is being felt all around the world. Let's bring in Angie Lau with the details this morning. And that's right, some uh, pretty disappointing numbers from the European side, which really hampered the trade we saw in the U.S. as well. Yeah, and it was surprising because you've got the two strongest nations in Europe, Germany and France, and manufacturing contracting and really driving these euro numbers uh, down. It was a surprise. It wasn't uh, the expectation. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg had expected a gain. But let's go through the numbers really quickly. Euro area PMI manufacturing dropped to 47.7. And if you look at the services, uh, we saw a similar drop. Uh, both uh, services and manufacturing dropped f to that from uh, from. Uh, the uh, 48.8 that we saw in February, economists had actually forecast a gain. Now this adds to concerns that global ripple effect, because we also saw China manufacturing that flash P uh, PMI number from mm -hmm. HSBC showing that uh, China manufacturing could contract uh, uh, further in March. Uh, 48.1 was the number. Right. And that really kind of builds into all of this. Uh, we talked with Stéphane Ecolo, he's chief uh, European strategist at Market Securities in London. Um, people, he has been too optimistic regarding global economic recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still concerns in Europe, um, but there are still headwinds in China. And so we saw the ripple effect in Europe. Certainly, uh, stocks dropped there uh, as investors reacted to this Okay, number. so, well, you know, we're already seeing the uh, Asian markets again, another down day after losses we saw yeah. on Wall Street. And uh, yeah, so maybe the U.S. can help us through all of this because we saw jobless claims coming out better than expected, now sitting at a four-year low. But it seems like they focus still on manufacturing. They really did because it's, you know, these growing signs. They're okay at home, but they also got that FedEx report, which is a barometer of business activity globally, and uh, also seeing some headwinds there. So all of these signs are really adding up to concern. In fact, we saw investors uh, head to the yen mm -hmm. again, and we saw the yen strengthen, in fact. Uh, take a look at what the yen did yesterday, uh, but surged uh, more than 1%, almost 1%. We saw commodities dropping, copper, nickel, lead, oil, uh, all these commodity baskets practically uh, reacting to, well, uh, realistically reacting to uh, the concerns out there. Okay, Angie, that's right. And also we got to throw in FedEx as well, predicting slower growth. And, you know, a lot of these shipping companies, uh, transport companies, really is an indication as to how global trade is performing. So let's take a look at the uh, U.S. Wall Street's uh, reaction to those economic numbers that we just got. Corny Donahoe joins us live from uh, New York this uh, morning. And Corny, we did see declines after a nice buoyant start to the week. Uh, how's the mood right now in New York? 
It's a little bit painful, and it's especially after what Andrew was just talking about before the China and European manufacturing number, causing a bit of pain for uh, stocks today. The Euro Area Services manufacturing falling more than forecast in March. And as you mentioned also earlier, FedEx, that disappointing forecast. Everybody was looking for this. They're saying that the recession in Europe, these rising crude prices, that's a reason behind this. FedEx saying that their express shipments business declining both domestically and in internationally because of this blow trend growth that we're seeing. Cargo Airline also saying that it parked an unspecified number of planes in the desert, pairing a lot of the flight hours, reviewing their domestic capacity, trying to cut those costs. But this forecast, huge concern. FedEx, the bellwether for the global economy, because it carries so much. It carries everything all across the globe. Now, the worst performing stocks today, energy on the drop in oil prices, followed by materials and financials. Susan. Yeah, and also a lot of earnings uh, after the bell as well, Courtney. That includes the uh, biggest member chip maker in the U.S., Micron Technology. Uh, yeah, now they reported uh, their third consecutive quarterly loss, a demand slowing down for PCs. We've been talking about this uh, sometime, Susan, and that's been pushing down chip prices. But the glut of memory chip production, that sent prices tumbling. That makes it harder for Micron and all the competitors to stay profitable in this environment. Now, the picture may improve if the bankruptcy of Elpida cuts, uh, cuts the industry output. That's according to a lot of analysts. Also, today's earnings report was an important earnings report because it's the first from Micron since the death of CEO Steve Appleton in a plane crash. That was back in February. So it's been very difficult times for the company. We also heard from Nike, different story. They're reporting third quarter profit that topped analyst estimates, sales gaining right here in North America. And this quarter, Nike rolled out so many new products. They had the Retro Air Jordans, the Foam Posit Galaxy. That cost 220 bucks. And when both of these sneakers were released this past quarter, we saw so many people standing outside of malls and riding with fights in the U.S. So stay dominant. Nike has to come up with these hot shoes. Just shouldn't fight for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do it, as I say. Corny, thank you for that. Corny Donahoe uh, from New York this morning. Let's take a, a look at some other news. And Facebook's agreed to a deal with IBM as it looks to beef up its IP arsenal amidst increasing litigation in the tech sector. So the social networking sites is said to have acquired 750 patents covering various technologies such as software and networking. So the acquisition will also swell the size of Facebook's portfolio, which includes at least 56 issued patents and 503 filed U.S. patent applications. And while Facebook's hotly anticipated listing can't be too far away, China's a social network operators have been told that they shouldn't expect to benefit too much from the Facebook move. Uh, Ren Ren and Sina both jumping in New York trader in early February after Facebook announced that it was going to go ahead with a $5 billion IPO. However, equity research firm Maxim Group warns that any bounce from the Facebook listing will not be sustainable. And let's say that the two companies are far from replicating Facebook's success and they'll struggle to generate cash in China's less developed online advertising market. Now let's take a look at earnings coming through from China and the first of the big four state-owned banks are coming out with fourth quarter results and more will be on the way in the five days ahead but uh, let's take a look at Ag Bank and uh, really disappointing the market David Inglis has got more details here and it's quite a surprise since it is the first drop I believe for Ag Bank since their listing here in Hong Kong two years ago that's right and you know the